Welcome to another episode of the Supper Heroes podcast. I'm John O'Proudfoot, and in this interview, I chat to Neville Wellington, who has been a GP since 1994. Neville is the director of the Noakes Foundation and the Nutrition Network and lives in Cape Town, South Africa, where he runs a diabetes clinic focusing on low carbohydrate lifestyles and continues to consult at his practice in Kenilworth. In this episode, I chat to Neville about some of the questions that have been burning in my mind around diabetes reversal. Like, how has diabetes treatment changed since the 90s? What are the early signs of diabetes? What is the link between diabetes and cholesterol? What are the mechanisms of diabetes? How are inflammation and diabetes connected? And then what does it actually look like when someone reverses diabetes? What does that actually mean? And then when someone reverses the reversal, in other words, they regress, is that because of biology? Or is that because of compliance? So there are lots to look forward to in this episode. If you enjoy the podcast, please follow it. Please share it with your friends or anyone else who you think will benefit. Until then, enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. This is episode 11 of the Supper Heroes podcast. And I have got Dr. Neville Wellington, general practitioner, diabetes reversal expert, extraordinaire director of the Noakes Foundation and Nutrition Network here to talk about how to reverse diabetes. Neville, what is happening? How's it, John? Nice to, fantastic to actually see you again and catch up with you. And uh, thanks for inviting me. It's, it's uh, we, As you know, we've been on this journey for, I don't know, eight, nine years now, and it's just continuing to ratchet up and we've been loving it. We're seeing so many uh, uh, fantastic changes with people. So, um, yeah just wonderful so thank you for having me pleasure so i wanted to start off with you in the 90s okay you're studying medicine none, none, none of this has happened yet what do they teach you about diabetes or type 2 diabetes and diabetes management wow yeah uh, to be honest very little uh, you know in terms of diabetes management you know the the, the in fact, even in the early 90s, I mean, I graduated in 1990, actually, right on the on the cusp. And uh, at that stage, diabetes was starting to take off. You know, type 1 was there. Type 2, we, we sort of were seeing it coming into practice. I, and I, I started in practice in 94, and diabetes wasn't a massive thing. But we were just starting to see quite a number of patients coming to the practice and Kind of felt well, you know. Went to some talks, and and in fact, I did one of the early uh, studies on on one of the long-acting insulins, and that kind of helped me get a get a handle on what diabetes was and 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 how to actually what the, what the current treatment was and what the current kind of talk was. And the main thing was that with diabetes then was well, it's irreversible, it's progressive, it's going to you basically need to treat with more medication. And it's not when some, you know, it's not if somebody's going to need insulin, it's when they're going to need insulin. Mm. And it, it was really, there really wasn't much um, kind of talk around lifestyle, around monitoring. There was very, very little understanding, actually, um, certainly from a GP point of view, uh, maybe more in a specialist point of view. Uh, but the we, we, we certainly didn't understand the nutrition side of it to any degree. Mm. Um, and we never taught much about nutrition. Yeah. So you're sitting there as a GP and you've got patients coming in and, you know, they're sick, right? They're feeling lightheaded. I mean, I don't know what the very early telltale signs are, but then you prescribe them drugs. What is your experience of, of being a doctor, meeting someone who you know is just going to get sicker and sicker until they die? I mean, I think there was this feeling of kind of, you know, where does this end? You know, can we change this? Can we turn this around? Um, and speaking to patients and saying, well, you've got to exercise, you've got to lose weight, but not really knowing how to get them to do that. That was really, you, you know, so we kind of assumed and send them to the dietitian, obviously, you know, the yeah. dietitian would give them the right diet, but things were not getting better. That was, that was a crazy. I never saw anybody who actually, reverse their diabetes as it were um, who changed things around or you know got got any decent advice and you, and you kept wondering what you know and, and obviously for us you know the low fat diet was kind of seen as the the way to do it everything had to yeah. be done low fat because it oh
Do you uh, lost me? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I lost you for a second there. That was Yeah, okay. we didn't even so, understand the cholesterol theory at the time. So we you know it, it so but but cholesterol was becoming the big thing. Yeah. And somehow yeah. that pumped everything that you did, you know. So you you you're so, worried about the cholesterol, but you weren't worried about the the, the, the diabetes so much. So they so just to get this right, they thought cholesterol and diabetes were inextricably linked. I mean, is that is it linked? Well, there definitely is a link if you look at 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 um, diabetes. So 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 if you look at if you understand, diabetes basically causes heart disease, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that we know. You know, everybody diabetes. The high proportion of patients with diabetes are going to get heart disease, heart attacks, peripheral vascular disease, strokes. That's that's a well known fact. It's it's indisputable. Mm. The problem is saying what is actually causing heart disease so so, so the, the the theory of cholesterol came around has come around and said well cholesterol seems to have caused heart disease so if diabetes is causing heart disease cholesterol must be part of it right and somehow because we we can treat cholesterol or we think we can treat cholesterol you know we must treat the cholesterol first and, and the, the diabetes is not such a big thing and that that kind mm. of has been the 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 the, the 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 talk and then you know we had the very early studies on cholesterol that seem to show massive improvements. Of course, people have now said those studies were a bit flawed. And, and you know, if you reduced an LDL by 1%, you got 50% improvement in, in, in heart disease. Well, it's, it's not actually really been completely proven. Whereas you've reduced HbA1c and you reduce hyperglycemia, you get massive improvements, 28% improvement in heart disease and, and in peripheral yeah. vascular disease and stuff like that. So so it's 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 kind of got put together because they both seem to be causing it. But in fact, as a, as a, as a clinician now, and as a diabetologist, as it were, yeah. I think we, you know, we know now that definitely heart disease and diabetes, that's the problem. And we know the mechanisms even more now, because that's, that's been shown over the last, even last 20 years, the actual me mechanisms of damage to cells and endothelial dysfunction. And that has been shown to be caused by high glucose levels and insulin can you go into that a bit? I'm, I'm hoping it's not above my pay grade, but what, what is the, <laughs> yeah, go easy on me. You know, what is the mechanism? Well, I'll, I'll give you the story that I try and give to most patients just to try and keep it as simple. But basically when you have high glucose levels in your bloodstream, okay. You know, the problem with, with, with the body is that once your liver is, is damaged and it's overproducing glucose, when you eat carbohydrates and which release glucose, there's no real place for the glucose to go, but into the bloodstream. It just spills over into the bloodstream. So you get these high peaks and, uh, of, of, of sugar and often last for hours on end after you've eaten carbohydrates because you just can't metabolize this high level of glucose. But the problem is that a number of cells take up glucose from the blood from the bloodstream, like your endothelial mm. cells, and the cells literally aligning the inside of the blood vessels. Yeah. By osmosis, they don't have mechanisms to stop high glucose levels from, from, from going into the cells. And then nerve cells, tendon cells. They, so so when, they've, when you've got high glucose levels in the cells, you need to metabolize that glucose. You need to kind of get rid of it. Mm. Um, and your mitochondria are basically your little engines that metabolize glucose, convert it into ATP, and you use that energy. But the problem is when you've got so much glucose in the cells, you can't flux through this, the glucose through the mitochondria. And you start to get rid of, you have to use other pathways. They call them poly, polyol pathways, sorbitol pathways, proteokinase C. And literally, that, those, high, th those, those pathways actually are quite inflammatory. Now, we, always, we know that inflammation is kind of your, your big issue. But literally, from the mitochondria, you start bleeding off free radicals or extra electrons that, that literally attach to other uh, oxygen, for instance, oxygen gets converted to oxygen three minus. That's a free radical. It can damage other things. I suppose one can think of it like little bombs going off in your in your in your blood cells. Right. Okay. That's cool. In your cells, and those cells get damaged and need to be replaced and need to be 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 renewed. So you've got this happening all around the body, but it's 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 um, it's not happening. Um, sorry, <laughs> it's not happening. Uh, in every single cell, but it's in the major cells, like your, like the cardiovascular cells. So, yeah. so anyway, you, 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 to repair that, you need to lay down plaques and and new and new cells, 
and that's happening all the time. So that, that can cause little plaques to build up right, and okay. narrow your arteries. So, so the, I mean, so the, that's one aspect. I mean, there's, it's happening all over. Your brain is obviously getting fried as well by these high glucose spikes. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So just to, because so the plaque that we all see in that, you know, the classic archery cross section with all that plaque buildup is actually a response to inflammation and not just like butter going into your vein and sticking to the inside of the vein. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's exactly that. And the, the problem is that, that you, you'll use oxidized LDL will be taken up by the macrophages, which are being laid down there to reduce, to actually like heal the, 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 the endothelial lining. And that, and then because you see LDL there, you think, well, LDL is the cause of this, of this damage, but actually LDL yeah. is part of some of the healing mechanism there because there's a whole process. Our bodies are incredibly complex. So, so it's the glucose, high glucose levels initially that are causing inflammation that set off this whole thing. So that's, that's my understanding. Right. And that's certainly from a lot of uh, papers that I've read. So I'm not just taking this out of the thin air. This is yeah, yeah. science at, at molecular level, at cellular level. <laughs> cool. So, so before you knew all of this, you're minding your own business as a GP, and it's like 2010, and this lunatic sports scientist comes along and says, no, we've been doing it all wrong. I take back everything I said. And actually removing carbohydrates from the diet is the way to become healthy, not removing fat. And, and then you experience this controversy. So what was, what was your, how did you kind of get hooked and maybe start with what your initial response was? <laughs> so, you know, fascinating thing that happened here. So, so it was, it was very much serendipitous in terms of what, when Tim came out and my kind of light bulb moment and, in fact, I was doing a diploma in in in, in diabetes, a diabetes diploma, a postgraduate diabetes diploma through the University of Cardiff. And I decided in the 2009, 2008, 2009, I really was, this, this diabetes thing was coming and we were seeing mm. more and more patients. And I thought, but I don't actually, I'm not really that good at treating this anymore. And you know what I thought was right just doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I just need to go and study it a bit more. Um, and I'll and, and I'll find out how how to actually reverse this and give patients hope and and stop this whole disease thing. And so I was on my second year, it was 2011, 2012, of doing this postgraduate diploma in diabetes. And in fact, I was in the module of cardiovascular disease, and somebody introduced us to this paper by Michael Brownlee, the pathobiology of 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 um, which of, of diabetes, which actually explained all these mechanisms that I've just explained now. Yeah. And, and I was, uh, and Tim had actually sent us an email or a letter, in fact, addressed to us uh, as practitioners, at right sort of near the beginning of 2012. He said, I've been on this journey for a year. I've been doing this stuff. And I actually brought it home. And I said to Tracy, Tim sent us this letter, you know, a bit surprising, but, you know, I respect him. He's a great scientist. And I've always wondered about it. She looked and she read the letter and said, oh, this is Atkins. <laughs> 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 and That's she said but we did Atkins a while ago and we, it sort of worked but you know I'm going to do it again so she kind of got onto low carb and I said look I, I just don't have time to read this and, and look through all these references but I'll I'll um I'm gonna when I finish with my my studies I'll I'll go back to it and literally it was about October when I was doing this whole thing on pathobiology and that and a, and, and a light bulb moment suddenly came and I thought I'd read his letter and and this whole thing about you you know, carbohydrates cause glucose spikes in your bloodstream, but you just got to give more medication. And then I suddenly thought, what happens if you reduce carbohydrates? It was like a yeah. light bulb moment. And I thought, oh, my flip, look, Tim's right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally was like that. So that was for me, this, both these things just interacted at the same time. And I, it, it was, it really was a light bulb moment. And, and then what happened is, is that I'd had a patient who had, who badly controlled diabetic, who one day came in and his HBMC had been running at 11%, nothing ever changed, and suddenly it was at 7%. And I said, what the flip have you done? Mm. And, not, and, and the other thing was that his triglycerides had gone from 30 down to 1. Okay. I said, what have you done? Have you, you, you haven't been increased your medication. Mm. And he sort of quietly said to me, no, I've, I've been following Atkins. And that kind of like was, what? I, yeah. I, I mean, I... 
didn't even understand. You should be, you so, should be dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like everybody tells me. So, so, I, so I was really intrigued. And um, so I then thought, okay, let me, let me, so I finished my course and I took Tim's letter again. And I went through every reference. And I read the books that he said and I read the, the articles that he wrote that he referenced. And I actually thought, actually, this is really interesting. Then I started seeing one or two other patients coming through and having changed their lives, lost weight, reversed diabetes or reduced diabetes, um, or improved it and that. And I, and I thought, well, I've got to do it myself. So I've just got to see whether I can even sustain low carb. Because surely, no, you know, if, if this is right, then it should work. If, it, if it's not, then I'll, then I'll know that I, that I can't do it. Now, I must say, things for me change. I lost weight. I'm not diabetic or anything. I just, my irritable bowel syndrome went away. I was training for August. That got better. I did my best time the next year. Wow. <laughs> just, wow. just crazy things. And I thought, okay, this really does work. So then I actually... Tim had then started um, doing a radio program on CCFM, which is what I listened to. And uh, I um, I responded on, on, on that program once or twice. And then I, I phoned his room, uh, his rooms and I said, look, I, I think we need to meet. <laughs> I want to just uh, chat to you about some of the stuff I've been doing. And uh, and so we met and, and we had a half an hour appointment, which turned out, to, I think, be almost an hour and a half, two hours. And then things just started rolling from there. So that was and, that was my start, yeah. That's your start, and then so you started applying it in general practice. So, and I know that you're the head practitioner at at your practice with what, like ten other doctors. Uh, yeah, twelve other doctors at the moment. Twelve other doctors. So then you implemented this, and and how did you start? How did you start treating patients now? So I mean, initially, I I, I started with just seeing what patients were doing. My first thing was to actually get patients to actually start monitoring their glucose levels properly. Mm. I thought, you know, if I'm going to do this, I need to know, I need to have more data. Mm. And so I started giving patients glucometers, instructing them to start testing their glucose levels before and after meals and to actually see what they were doing. And very quickly, it was obvious that, that carbohydrates push up your sugar levels. I mean, it's not even a question. So, you know, whether you eat bread or chocolates or dare I say it, oats. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and and it spiked your glucose levels. And, um, you know, so so that was very obvious. So then I started saying to them, well, we, Prof Notes has come out of this low carb. I, I really started seeing changes in other people. Do you want to look at trying this? So then I had a number of patients trying to change it. And, you know, I had a I had a really good diabetic educator as well at the time. I'd, I'd then also been involved with CDE. CDE is the Center for Diabetes and Endocrinology, and yes, yeah. done their course, um, and and then the diploma in Cardiff, which they had organised. I must say, so I'm very grateful to CDE. You know, for the amazing um, start, the help they've given me. And I then started just doing more and more patients, and and as I saw the results. I started getting more and more confident in it. And mm. I spoke to my colleagues about it. I think they eventually got sick and tired of me talking about it. <laughs> but, um, you know, for them, it's taken a bit longer for them to actually start to see the results and even have their own patients um, kind of working on it. But but more and more, my colleagues have come to the party. I mean, they, you know, they'll refer patients to me or they just do it themselves. And uh, yeah. it's, really amazing to see that um so so yeah it's 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 that that's been an ongoing journey now and that's we're learning every day actual definition of i think i'm losing connectivity from time to time so sorry if it's a bit buggy everyone who's watching but the what is actually reversing diabetes like you know and we know what a four minute mile is what is the metric what is you know how do you classify yourself as having reversed it so I'm really going to go along with what um, the Verta Health and them have, have kind of yeah. defined. So, so if you look at what what is a diagnostic criteria for diabetes, and then you look at you can then use that as your kind of reversal thing. So, so around the world, every um, um, diabetes association will say that if it's a fasting glucose level above seven, 
a HbA1c above 6.5 or a glucose tolerance test, which we do much less of nowadays, where your level is 11.1. Mm. So that's kind of defined as when you have the, any of those parameters, you defined as being diabetic. Okay. Okay. So if you bring glucose levels down, now you may not get the fasting glucose levels well below seven initially, but that eventually comes if you follow this for a while. But the HbA1c below 6.5% has been seen as a as kind of the cutoff for reversal. And I'll talk a little bit about remission as well, just because that's kind of also a buzzword. So, so, so criteria for reversal would be off most medication except metformin, HbA1c right. below 6.5%. And... And I mean, the fasting, you're not going to always get it below seven, but it will get there if you carry on. And uh, pretty much that's it. It's, it's around 6.5% most people are using as a criteria and then below uh, and then getting people off medication, but mostly kind of metformin last. Some people get off it. For me personally, it's probably a little bit high 6.5 percent to be honest mm. because actually normal is under 5.7 percent pre-diabetes is, is registered between 5.7 and 6.5 by all the world um, associations okay i know some kind of says 5.5 percent so it's you know yeah. but if you go with what's actual definitions it's it's 5.7 so my aim yeah. actually for most patients is to get them below 5.7 percent great so what you're saying is but but so from being full-blown type 2 you can go back to pre-diabetic and that's having reversed diabetes, but then you want to get out of pre-diabetes too. And that'll, okay. Absolutely. So, yeah. And so what is the turnaround time on that? Three months. Three months. In, and yeah. Maybe six months if you've been really badly controlled and you work yeah. hard, maybe, maybe take a little bit longer. But no, I mean, Vert yeah, sorry, Vert Karen. Vert were doing it within 10 weeks. They, would, they, would, they, they check people after 10 weeks. Hmm. So, I mean, if I do the HbA1c, and I mean, I can, a uh, recent patient, um, okay, actually one of my worst controls, I never thought this guy would be able to do it. Um, was referred by, by, by a friend of his who had basically, he reversed it. I mean, he's, the, his friend, I saw the other day, he's 5.2% he's now, and I've said wow. he can stop everything. And he's, wow. and he's done that in three months. Um, but he wasn't that badly controlled. This guy had 13.4%. And after three months, he's 6.9%. So it's not quite a reversal yet. But I mean, from there into, to there in six, in six months, in three months is incredible. I mean, one of my very first patients was 10.6%. And by the end of three months was 5.9%. So he was reversed. Sure. Um, so it does depend on when you see the patients, how quickly they can do it. But I would say if they're really good, they can get pretty close in, in three months. Um, you know, if you're sort of running an HbA1c of 758 even maybe nine, you can probably get down to 6.5. Remember, it's just the amount of damage that's done to the red blood cells that's got to be re re renewed. Sure. And so we'll get into remission now, but just while you're on that, so the Verda studies that I've read say, say that um, it, it's 60% of their patients were able to reverse it within the first 12 weeks. And then after one year or two years, I can't remember because they've got a one and a two year report, yeah. but they said it was only 50 now, obviously, as a coach, knowing how people operate, my immediate, uh, like not judgment, but opinion goes into compliance. But yes. do you know whether there's data or even feedback from them on, on whether that's compliance or biology? The 60%, like what happened to the other 40%? Sorry, is actually what I'm asking. Yeah, so I think, look, that's, that's a good question. In fact, it's something I'd love to have spoken to Sarah Holberg about because mm. I would also wanted to know that answer because it's not completely apparent from the, from what they said. Um, my feeling is that there's probably compliance and possibly a bit of biology. Some people have been so far down the road that mm. they actually are almost sort of an insulin kind of, um, not negative. I mean, they, they still they don't have enough insulin. They, there's just too much damage to the pancreatic cells, so they're just not getting the, the insulin responses. Yeah. Whereas we know, and we've seen this. I mean, I've seen this. In, in, if I if I if I get a newly diagnosed patient, they've got the best chance of reversal. You know, right. If I see okay. somebody 10, 10, 20, 15 years down the line, much more difficult. Um, first, you just get them to change their habits because they get given all the wrong advice anyway, and they find it difficult to change. 
and secondly um you know just the the the, the physiology the pathology is is, is worse for them and mm. you've got to reverse that as well so my feeling is that it's, it's probably those long-standing diabetics that have struggled to get into that full-blown reversal as it were yeah. and possibly just struggled with society you know the, the things on offer doctors advice that they get from from other doctors they see you know they, they all, that that kind of all um can i can kind of like upset the apple cart i guess or whatever block, block them from pushing it yeah i mean there's a lot more to the to the graph than just the the, the blood you know it's a it's a life <laughs> it's a yeah. whole life yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, Absolutely. What is, so what is the difference between reversal and remission? So for me, remission, if, if, if you, for me, remission would be almost 100% normal, no medication, under 5.7%. And, you, you know, the, the problem with remission is that, that people then think it's, you, 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 you're so well, you, you, you're cured, as it were. So that, that's probably the next thing would be cure. Remission for me would be back to almost, to, to normal, not diabetic level or not even pre-diabetic level, at off all medication, but it's not a cure in that you will never you'll always you'll be able to eat carbohydrates as long as as, as much as you want. I, yeah. I don't think that's that's possible ever for anybody who's had diabetes or pre-diabetes or anything like that. They they will always have that genetic predisposition to having a um, diabetes if they suddenly start eating carbs. Yeah. Sure. Got it. So, so now you're doing this in general practice and like we were saying before we went live, my, because I'm so in it, like I just yes. assume that everyone's doing it, but what is, what is the uptake? Like, is it, I mean, obviously Cape Town's like the epicenter, I would say mm -hmm. where it's become relatively normal to do it, but what is the climate out there in general practice? Like are people prescribing this or is it still very much, uh, uh, what is it like? Are you still a heretic? <laughs> yeah as i said you probably do feel a little bit like you're you, you you're the only one doing it and you know i haven't had a lot of pushback um in general in fact i've had a lot of more, more people being curious um probably the kind of worst pushback is from one or two cardiologists <laughs> right okay what's their complaint uh, well, I'm not using huge amounts of statins, and and I'm I'm, I'm questioning the LDL cholesterol hypothesis. You know, everybody knows it's LDL. You know, it's, everybody knows it's cholesterol, apparently. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, so so the fact that you even question it must be you must be stupid. But okay. Uh, but that's the only pushback I've had. For the rest, I've actually had quite a lot of um, interest in it. I think the biggest issue for most of my colleagues is. How sustainable is it? They, you know, because they get told, well, nobody can stay on it. You know, the trials show that people fall off, and even Virta Health shows that people are starting to drift off. Mm. And I suppose that that's the answer to that really is that when you're living in in a, in a high carb environment, and every society is around that, it's it's really difficult for people to kind of maintain maintain it as easily. Um, and, so, and so, so well, I guess. So, the, so the, from the average GP, they're kind of saying, well, it's not sustainable, so we may as well not even try or we'll start because yeah. and part of that is, is I, I think that's just a kind of more like a we can't really be bothered kind of syndrome rather than. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating because it's like, because diabetes isn't sustainable either, you know, no. like let, let's just get that out there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> let's, just ask, let's just ask as well, how many clinical trials on high, high, low fat, high carb diets actually show reversal of diabetes? Um, how many is it? Is it nothing? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, and, and, and so I mean, sustainability I know, in that. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's, the sustainability of diabetes is, is, there isn't, it's not sustainable. Even the, the world economy won't cope with the, the current growth rate, right? Aren't we looking at like um, the USA going bankrupt in, in 2027 or I don't know, maybe it's been pushed out, maybe not, um, just because of the cost. The numbers are scary and, and the yeah. economy, the, the cost of this disease is, is it is, it, it, it will bankrupt the country if you're trying to treat it like on, on the current status. And especially with the new medications coming out, the cost of those medications, you know, we're not we're not talking small numbers anymore. 
Um, right. And, you know, the pharmaceutical companies push that hard. So it's so, just not, not sustainable. So how do you think we scale this treatment? How does, how does it get to the people who need it? You know, because at the moment you like, you know, with these little niche pockets everywhere doing it. Hmm. What, is, what is the roadmap that you see? So, obviously, from our own point of view, we need to make sure that we that we are doing it correctly and we are getting it right. So that that's yeah. the first thing. And the next thing is 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 really trying to get the message out to our own colleagues, and and for them to start seeing it for themselves. Um, and that is definitely starting to happen. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not actually. I, I really don't want to. I'm not. I wasn't trying to knock my colleagues at all about about diabetes because there are quite a lot that are, are really starting to do it and interested. And and personally, I'm I'm getting quite a few inquiries, doctors phoning, doctors writing to me, doctors sending me patients, um, yeah. and and you know and and as I interact with them, slowly they become more and more interested and 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 begin to understand it. So I think that's a that's a the first thing for 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 our colleagues to start seeing patients that are that have that have actually done this, and that's starting yeah. to trickle into society now. Then, of course, the patients tell the patients, they tell their friends, and, yeah. and we start to see that happening. So that's, that's kind of the first little wave that's happened. The next thing is really actually training the colleagues and teaching them. And that's really our next phase. And that's where we're in at the moment in terms of what we do through the Nutrition Network. And right. So, so, so just I'll stop you there because I want to get into the training and everything. It's super exciting. Sure. But for a lot of the people out there, it's very, that, like, there's some confusion about the difference between the Noakes Foundation and Nutrition Network. Um, and I know that you're a you're director of both. So maybe you can <laughs> explain, <laughs> explain the difference. Okay. So, so obviously the Noakes Foundation was set up really with the goal to be improving kind of the, the whole low-carb environment, I guess, and, and, and looking at ways to improving – proving it for society, for people in general, yeah. and, and, and looking at some of the research. So the Noakes Foundation wanted to do research as well as um, getting the message out there, as well as um, affiliating with, with people who were going to be following with, with, the, with the low carb environment. And then, and then uh, looking at the whole thing of how, to, how, how, how can we make this sustainable, especially for those who can't afford uh, eating this way and out of that arose eat better south africa which is one of the sort of arms of the noakes foundation yeah. and that was really to a whole lot of interventions that have been done over the last few years in in low socioeconomic groups to really see whether this is sustainable and we've got some really good studies from that and some um work showing that that actually yes it is and and, and actually it, it really can make a difference in in the low in in the sort of in people who in the low socioeconomic, you know, especially those who are overweight, diabetic, yeah. hypertensive, you know, just struggling. So yeah. so that was part of it. And the nutrition network then was born out of out of the Noakes Foundation as well. It's it's, it's basically the organization. It's a it's a for profit organization, obviously, because it, we need to make money which was gonna which feeds back into the the Noakes Foundation to 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 really help the Eat Better South Africa and the research and all the other all the other income that's that, that that's needed for the Noakes Foundation. Cool. So as you know, the Noakes Foundation does get income from various sources, right. donations and your books. <laughs> um, obviously, <laughs> help set that off. Uh, Real, 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 Real Meal Revolution and uh, and then obviously a lot of other terms other books and then yeah. um, through affiliations with with various low carb banting kind of products. Um, but the nutrition network then really became focused on, on teaching and training um, right. other practitioners, nurses, dietitians, coaches. Um, so, so that's, that's been, that, that's where, where we've kind of gone to, and that's really going to be the, the, the arm that's going to hopefully sustain a lot of the other, the other work that's been done. That's great. So, and now, and so the, the you know, the, the moment we've all been waiting for is now, I, I must tell you, when this came out, I was like, this is gold. This is going to give, you know, because a lot of guys, let me, yeah, I'll tell you a bit of my story. So no, we no. obviously have, we have, um, you know, we have coaches and we have a, um, a keto program at Real Meal Revolution, 
Mm. And one of the things that's preventing us from, from growing is actually that there are not enough people out there who know how to reverse diabetes and manage um, a keto transformation. So we're looking for coaches and doctors. And the, and the bigger that network is, the, you know, the more we can grow. So when you guys started training, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. You know, we don't mm. have to worry about training people anymore because um, there's like an expert organization doing it. Um, you know, with much more medical legitimacy than, than like Chef Jono. And, uh, and <laughs> you know, Amazing. Like, I mean, non, non-medical people are doing this and doing it well. So well, not- exactly, exactly. And so, and so when I heard that you were doing diabetes reversal training, I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is absolutely incredible. Like this has, people need to know about this. Um, and, and so I know that you offer it for, for allied health workers, which I think is, is coaches and, um, and various other sort of health professionals who aren't, but you also offer it to nurses and doctors and, and, and other people. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. We've got dietitian course as well. Yeah. And then but so tell me about, di- tell me about how you deliver this diabetes re- reversal course, what it entails and what you can do once you, you know, what are you qualified to do? Uh, once you finish? I think initially, our first thing was just to try try and get material out there. So so it's a training program that, firstly, it's online and it it is behind a paywall, so you do have to pay for it. Um, And, you know, we've had a lot of, we've had, I think, over a thousand people do it already. So the initial thing was our, our sort of initial course that came out of our, a low carb conference in 2018 we filmed all of those talks um and then put them online and then used that as our base and have subsequently added um a number of of courses including the one that i really have enjoyed is the diabetes reversal one it's, it's a fantastic courses and good good couple of speakers i mean tim obviously prof noakes marco gazella uh, myself hasina kaji Tamsin Murphy, you know, and and then we've got some fantastic patient stories as well on there. And so, and then we produced other courses. We've just done an obesity reversal course as well, obesity course, I think we called it. And then then one for dietitians, which I I thoroughly enjoyed. You know, there's some fascinating work done by a number of brilliant dietitians around the world. So, so we've added a number of courses to that. So, Firstly, you know, once you've done those courses, you get a certificate to say that you've completed these courses. It, it's not a, we, we would like eventually to get to a, a certified course diploma. And yeah. next year we are launching launching a proper certified course where we're going to be spending some time with participants, getting them to do um, some studies and um, doing some projects as well as spending time actually getting them to to to, to make sure that they're, they're up to speed with everything and wow. i mean we've had incredible participants on these things i mean doctors you know from right across the board from specialists to um you know people who are training nurses who've got medical backgrounds and that who've who've done incredible work so you know i think sometimes i i, I, I kind of pinch myself because these guys know so much now yeah <laughs> and, and, you know we, we've obviously collected work from from so many um of the guys who've published stuff so the, the vertel stuff and the um uh david unwin stuff uh, marco gazella and they've all participated for us and it's been fantastic yeah. Yeah, I saw Eric Westman on there as well. So did you get some content from Duke uh, University or just or from Eric? Just from Eric, I think, as oh. far as I'm aware. Um, he added for, that, for the initial course, he was he was fantastic because he was he was here in South Africa a couple of years ago and uh, we had we had, had a bit of a roadshow with him. So he, he gave yeah. us some stuff. And, and it's just been wonderful because he's, he, you know, I mean, his work with Atkins and the original Atkins work and then doing the, 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 some of the initial clinical trials has been groundbreaking. I mean, yeah, uh, so yeah, Westman. I, I just, I, I mean, all the names kind of escape me eventually because they, we just are absolutely blessed to have really the, the top of the top low carb people contributing to the courses. Absolutely. So okay, so now we're sitting. So as far as the ecosystem goes, we've got you know doctors uh, who can train. So I, I just want to make sure. So if you if I'm watching this video now and mm. I'm diabetic. And I want to find a doctor who 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 knows like this, who can who understands this narrative. 
uh, mm -hmm. where do I go? How do I get hold of a doctor who who I can trust, basically? Yeah, good question. I think I think we've got a list on the nutrition network. And this I'm is something that probably yeah. Maz, Maz can help me with as to, um, and I know that Marika Saboris, who's who's kind of does quite a lot of our media stuff. She's got a, she's got a low carb map, and so you can look on there. Crazy thing okay. is, people have found me even through Diet Doctor because they've also kept a map. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's cool. Okay, so so here it's actually nutrition network dot org, yes. and then oh. you've actually got a practitioners tab here where all yeah. of the wow, exactly. hey, a lot, a lot, yeah, like just too many to count, like hundreds of doctors here. Um, and then if you want to do a, if you want to do the diabetes reversal training, where, where do we go? Do we go? So you, um, you, you know, it, I think yeah. at the top it says courses or, and you, you basically need to register and then Got it. <clears throat> apply now. Yeah. Okay. And then there are all the courses. All right. So apply now. hash slash nutrition network.org nutrition hyphen network.org slash apply hyphen now and then yep. and then the, the doors are open and the doors and, open you just put your credit card in and <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know I, I like i don't often quote donald trump for many reasons but uh <laughs> but i read his book you know the art of the deal which is yeah. which apparently was totally not written by him but there's one quote in there which i will I'm, I'll, I'll happily mention and he says when you get free advice what when you take free advice you get what you pay for yeah. And uh, and okay. I, 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 brilliant, yeah. It's a brilliant quote because it's true. There's yeah. so many people scouring the internet for for information. And in the past, when we were knowledge poor, it was worth paying for volumes of information. But now, you know, every man and his dog's got a website and a and a blog and whatever. So the what you're paying for is curation. And mm. so you know, I take my credit card out all the time to buy information. Because I'd rather pay someone to give me what's give me the value and save me the hassle of going through all the fluff. So yeah, don't don't feel bad asking people to pay. They must pay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good stuff. And it, I mean, it's all being so. It's you know, it's all in our, in our stuff. We've put it together. It's original content. It's nothing. nothing no, we haven't taken stuff off the internet. We haven't gone and taken YouTube clips and stuff like that and put them on. We've actually gone and filmed it ourselves, done it ourselves. And you know, it's. It's amazing work. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed. And the, the incredible thing, John, I mean, this is, is that no matter who gives interviews or, 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 or speaks on you, they've had this journey and all yeah. of us have seemed to come from, from a different journey and yet almost end up at the same place. And the pathobiology, the pathophysiology, the way that, that things work, the medication, deep prescribing, whatever it is you, you're doing, it, it's it's it kind of all ends up there and it's 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 quite amazing um that that and and that in a sense helps to corroborate what 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 is being done mm. because actually if 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 we if we all we were sort of sitting in the same room and came up with something you know, together you'd be, be question questioning around it but i'll be watching mark because then i think my goodness he, he's doing exactly what i'm doing David Unwin's doing exactly what I'm doing, but I've never spoken to them in my life before. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's madness, hey? Yeah. Yeah. So so the guys are getting there. And Jay, Jay Wartman, I mean, same thing. Yeah. You, know, you, you just, it's amazing. So that that to me actually really gives it incredible um, kind of kudos, as it were, you know, that, that we're on the right track because if I, I'm not just, I'm not the only one that's found this. Yeah. Well, totally. And, and yeah, it shows, I mean, um, it's, it's growing. So it's not, yeah, it doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. So, um, Neville, it's been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. And, um, I can see there are loads of comments. I, I've made the mistake of reading comments during an interview before and just been totally, um, you know, <laughs> basically fallen off the bus. So I'm going to read them now and, and get back to them, but thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, if the link's not there already, I'll post a link to, um, to all the training. And I hope you train thousands and thousands and hopefully one day millions of doctors to reverse diabetes. It's a super powerful thing to be doing. And um, yeah, I, it's, it's just fantastic to see that you're doing it. So thank you for coming and sharing your story and, and your work with us. It's been an honor. Sure. Are you going to do some comments or are we going to leave? 
Uh, oh, we can look at comments quickly. Let's just see what we've got. Okay, so some of the comments were from um, Nutrition Network posting links and stuff. How do we set up an appointment with Neville Wellington? Do you want me to... <laughs> maybe not on the recording, but I... <laughs> do we send people to your practice? Sorry? Do we send people to your practice? I'm afraid that's the only way that I can see patients. I, I mean, I do see patients, fortunately, so so patients can can find my, my details online. And um, I'm in Cape Town, for those who, just in case you not sure great and do you do online appointments um i have done for uh, occasionally i mean uh, ideally see pa patients face to face but i mean we've we've actually are record have recorded some some patient actual courses we, we're going to be yeah. hopefully doing that next year sometime so cool. that'll be part of that so we may well end up doing some of the stuff online and i mean i think that's going to become the future really is is looking at online stuff but we haven't really got that set up yet so i don't want to at the moment i'm still working face to face and kind of one on one but right. we need to change that yeah it's coming it's in, in time it will come awesome yeah never look the other questions are, are comments and stuff that i can get back to very easily they're right. not specifically addressed to you so we'll we'll get there but thanks again and geez just keep keep it up it's so great Thank you. All right. well, thank you, John, and thanks for having us. I mean, it's really been great to, to catch up with you again, and uh, I'm sure we'll be doing a lot more of these things. So keep Cheers, well and all the best. Yeah. Cool, man. You too. Cheers. Bye.